Good evening and welcome to another edition of Life is People. And tonight I've been honoured to be joined by, I think it's the first time by a fellow artist. So without any further ado, welcome to the, uh, to the Life is People, Mick. Thank you very much. So okay. my, my first question to you has to be, tell me about where your journey with art started. Uh, I was locked away in a private school till I was 19. Uh, and it was one of those awful public schools. Can I just ask you a question? I've got this um, notice on the board here. Do I, can I tap it to switch it off? I've yeah. got this meeting is being recorded by the host. If I, I said, that's it, sorry, your, fa your, your face is back. Um, I, I was in this terrible school. I won a scholarship and went to this awful private school full of, full of paedophiles and, uh, all those words that we never knew then that we know now and uh, although I'd done a little bit of drawing and painting with uh, via my mother uh, they put me in, without my knowledge they put me down for maths, physics and chemistry to do A-levels and I couldn't do it I got up to 3% in these subjects Fortunate, who was a glass drape, and he used to wear a, vel a velvet covering in the glass with these very sharp knives. And he did the goblet for Chichester when he did his first uh, the, the round the world trip in his yacht. Was it Gypsy Moth? I think it was Gypsy Moth, something like that. And he was presented with a huge goblet, and Patrick Harrismith did it. So he, he got me to, he said, oh, well, here comes another one, bungs of flowers in a jar, and, 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 and said, do do something, you see. So I started doing things, and um, he said, right, I'm going to sort you out. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm going to see your parents when they come on to, to visit you uh, and, and tell them something. And the reason was it, I could concentrate for four hours as a young person like that when I was 17, 18. I could concentrate... He said, you've just, you've just been working for four, four and a half hours without a break. I, I like that. So he went to my parents on the visiting day and said, your boy needs to go to art school. Fortunately, my parents didn't know what art school was. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they were just pleased that there was some aim in life, you see. So I then went, uh, very, as a, a total innocent at 19, having been locked away for six years um, into Colchester Art School where we were meant to do a two-year course three of us did a one-year course because we worked very hard and were, were um, pushed on to the main main um, art schools and I went to Nottingham and that was I couldn't have gone to a better place and uh, spent three very happy years there just doing what I wanted to do and um, I always remember uh, one of the tutors, David, uh, David, somebody, oh, I can't remember, really nice guy. He, he helped me all three years. And um, he just said, when you arrive here, you'll do, just do what you want to do. But remember when you leave, you've got nothing. Mm. Of course, we took absolutely no notice of that. <laughs> Till the day I walked out of that art school in 1968 and realised I got nothing, right. and uh, that was it. And uh, that 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 uh, how I got in. I mean, it, it was it was step to Colchester it was dramatic. You know, with all these people not wearing uniform and things like that. It's hard for you to visualise, probably. And then from Colchester, which was very Methodist, <laughs> into uh, the, uh, into Nottingham, it was just like, Christ, this is amazing, you know, space, paint, blah, 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 and uh, four, four people in these old Victorian, Victorian rooms, you know, you had a corner each, you could do eight foot campuses and God knows what, plenty of room, and you just, and all the materials were free in those days. We just piled them up. In fact, I've got my very last tin of 
paint from Nottingham Art School, which I pinched. Um, <laughs> looking up on my shelf there, which is now 56 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's how I got into the game. And uh, um, from then on, I uh, went to live in Sweden because I'd fallen in love with some blonde hair. And I had a couple of exhibitions over there. Uh, and, and then we came back and had a son who, who now lives, still lives in Sweden. Now has gone back to Sweden. Um, that marriage failed. Then I married. I came down to Sudbury uh, in '77, something like that. Um, married again, and um, that's, we, that's where Tom comes in. He was born here in this house, not this house, but in Colchester, and. Um, uh, here I've had a few exhibitions, had a couple of games per house, the minors in Colchester, but I've had very few exhibitions. But, uh, my supporters, like the head of Norwich Art School, a very famous painter down here called John Adiman, who has a Welsh content. Um, all these sort of people who helped me would put the word in for me, and that's when I would get into anywhere. Unfortunately, they've all died. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got that backing has gone, which is which was very useful, you know, because he, he, um, T Tom has tried to get me in many an exhibition since then, and um, the response is just uh, appalling, you know. Um, I don't know if you saw a, a a series of island paintings, with just a little island in the middle with different themes. So uh, Tom made a disc of about. 20 or 30 of those go around the galleries around here and the, the, the best comment we got was you know all the paintings, island, 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 island and the comment came back from the gallery is this man has got not, a, he hasn't got a theme <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't make it up <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking Yes, this man's plan is not going to see him. And I thought, well, yes, <laughs> here we go. And, um, but I mean, Tom learnt an awful lot about that. I mean, I could have told him, but I mean, um, uh, since then, I think about, I think about 20, 30 years ago, I'm getting old, I can't remember now, about 20, 30 years ago, I think I more or less made a decision that I'm not going to bother with galleries anymore. I'm just going to do my own work. That was it. Now, if somebody likes it, Every now and again, somebody does, and we get somewhere. But I, it, it, it's few and far between. I've never had... Uh, I had a little show with a friend here uh, five or six years ago. Um, he sold six. I sold nothing. <laughs> and his stuff was real. So um, it, it was just the way it goes, you know. It, it's strange, isn't it? You know? so, Anyway, does that it's, help with you? <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's fascinating to, to hear that when you were at art college and studying it, that they were actually still teaching the actual techniques of like, from what I'm yeah. gathering, of, of actually, you know, how to imply, you know, how to apply paint on canvas or whatever. Because when I, when I did, um, right. go on. No, no, you've just, you've just hit the, Colchester was like that. Yeah. Um, Nottingham was the complete opposite. All right. So, for three years, completely free to do what you want. Because I mentioned it because when I went to when I studied art at, um, at in Leeds, I remember yeah. I was quite I was quite excited about you know finally getting to a you know a university and, and here we go and all the things you just said thinking I've got I've got three years ahead of me and and what I what, what kind of astounded me was there was no there was no um, lessons or even any kind of instruction on how to use basics of oil on canvas or how to apply water there was none of that it was just express yourself express yourself and, and I, I and I, I think it's, some, it's, it's a, to, to me personally I think it's something that I, I, I hate to imagine what it'd be like now if you went for a university now but it's probably it doesn't even probably get a canvas out now and I think it's something that's kind of 
been eroded away. And that's one of the reasons I love what you do because you're one of the few people I know that actually still use, you know, you know, oil. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm sure if I had money and more, um, other materials would, would have crept in. I, I mean, for example, I, I'd have liked to have done printing and I'd probably Printing. You know, using my work, but place to do it, you know. Um, I, I still like paint um, because I'm, uh, I think to me, painting's a bit, it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit like gardening. <laughs> it's, it's a bit strange. It's a bit like gardening. But you know, the old boy, the, the old boy down the road, his garden is absolutely perfect. And uh, well, he's been doing it for 60 years, so he's learned a few things, you know. Yeah. And I, I like that idea of doing it and doing it and doing it. That's why I, I often do many paintings. I mean, I don't know if you can see behind me. These are all, there's about 14 up there, but they're all the first coat of paint, you know, on each one. And then I sort of, and I've got no excuse. I come in tomorrow morning, I've got no excuse. One of them will be dry and then I can work on it. And then put that away and then start on another one. And that's how it works. And it, it's a bit like, um, was it money and his, his haystacks? You do so many. Yeah. Something different comes out. And, and out of each one comes this other little things as, you, as you're working along. So that the blind ticks and things. So I've always described my, my work as a bit like a, a Christmas tree upside down. So you've got the main pole through the middle. And I keep going up there, and then I have to come back again to go up a bit higher, and then I go up there, and then I come back again. And you keep doing that, and somehow it sort of builds up. Um, and I, I, I think, um, what's that Thomas Hardy thing? I come down here, well, it's not these days, because it's so dark. I've never known it's so dark. But normally in the, in the summer, for example, I come here at 5 o'clock in the morning, and the Thomas Hardy thing I was going to say is when you, you won't write anything unless you've got a pencil in your hand. And the idea is you come in and as long as you're here, you'll do something. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what happens. I have no problem coming in and starting. And the, often the, the earlier in the morning, the better. Um, what you do in the morning is probably the most important part. And then in the afternoon, it dribbles off a little bit, you know. Um, and that, I do that seven days a week. So every every day, seven seven days a week, and I think it has to be like that. Otherwise, you never get anywhere. Yep. Mhm. Mm I mean, you're absolutely correct. I mean, this is what, um, it's it's a discipline. It's a muscle. If you, if you let that muscle, if you don't if you don't continue yeah. with it, it becomes weak. Yeah, that's right. So it, it creates a little hassle back here because um. She tells every her indoors. She, she says she tells everyone I'm not allowed in the studio. So I just say I'm not allowed in the kitchen. So that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> so we live separate lives in this. <laughs> We're ten yards apart. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of fun about her interrupting. That's what I'm going to have on my gravestone. No more interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, again from one artist to another I mean, do you when you when you're creating do you in your yeah. studio do you, do you do you create in silence or do you have music playing i've got to be very honest now i have the television on with the most appalling programs on okay and uh, it's 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 just a little background like this morning i had uh, no, I can't even remember the name. Um, oh, some cops and robbers from the 1970s. And, and um, Arthur, Arthur Daly, what's that one called? You know, oh, anyway, um, just nonsense. So, because I used to have the radio on. Uh, for many years, I had Radio 4 on most of the time. But I'm just fed up of the news. Yeah. And then I, used to, I listened to Radio 6. Why do they have to have the bloody news on every hour? They, you yeah. know. Uh, and the sort of news we're having, 
I can shoot the bloody lot of them. So uh, <laughs> I just have nonsense on there, which I don't, I don't have to think about. Um, I do, I do play music, but I, I play a little music myself. So I tend to like to listen to my music. I don't like it as background stuff. Um, and sometimes I, I mean, like this afternoon, I had a place in the sun or Rick, Rick Stein on. And the reason I have that on is because he's either in the Mediterranean or something like, which I love. And every now and then I look around, there's a view of the sea. That'll do me. And back to work, you know. <laughs> I just, I just, just and I, I expect Tom told you, my, my, my love is Crete. Yep. And it, 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 if I could, I would have moved, I, I'd move out there. Uh, it's a bit late in the day now, but uh, 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 there's, there's something that makes me very happy about being out there. And uh, there's a contentness there. Uh, which I cannot explain, which I do not get here. And I, I tried to analyze it when I've, I've been out there, before COVID, obviously. And there's something, you know, I don't miss anything here. After, after I go for about six or eight weeks at a time. And that's, you know, about five weeks later, I just suddenly realized, I don't miss anything. And the reason is, I look behind me, there's the mountains. I look there, there's the sea. There's my friend. If I want to talk to him, that's it. Yeah. And you, you, you just, you've got everything by having no. Uh, I don't know how to do something like that. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's enough there to keep you busy. And uh, although my work is, is not necessarily landscape, um, it's because of Crete. Um, you, you start looking at things more, um, you know, after a holiday you see things, but when, it's a bit like looking in the mirror. You, you do this to go out in the morning, but if you're going to do a self-portrait, you start looking at yourself for four hours every day, for a few days, you see a lot more than you would by just having a short time. Yep. And that's what Crete. That's what Crete gave me is that that um, depth of looking, uh, and I could just sit there for hours. A bit rather like a Greek old man, you know. They sit there with a coffee. Uh, mine's probably a cognac, but there we are. Um, and just you sit there, and this, this this landscape keeps changing in front of you, and it's the colours. The um, I always remember one day walking down the road from where I live. Uh, you know these white houses and all the rest of it, and the blue was so powerful it it almost came round the corner. Mm -hmm. I mean, how how do you how do you explain that? I don't know. So I'm still looking. <laughs> no, I I I I, I can completely concur with that because um, I had the same sort of feel um, as I mentioned before we went live when I lived in Argentina. I'd often go across to Uruguay. And the, again, it was something about the light. It was something particular about the yeah. light that really attracted yeah, yeah. me to, to... Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're like, but I, I love painting out in nature, out, out, out live, you know, there. You know. But the trouble is, I mean, this is me personally, whenever I paint out in life, I'll be doing it and I'll be, con you know, you, you get, as you know, you get sucked into what you're creating. Yeah. And before you know it, you turn around about you know, after half an hour and you see there's a whole group of people behind you and you're like, right, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I, it, I, I don't actually work much outside. I, I, I do the up drawing or make notes or things like that. Um, and I, I, I collect images all over. I mean, um, the first Cretan images I got was their postcards. And especially old postcards, the colours in them were absolutely amazing. And I had, up till that point, I had never used much colour. My yeah. early, my early stuff, like the political stuff of 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, is, is, is colour-wise is very bland. Um, so the Cree introduced me to colour, and it also introduced me. Um, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think, who did the Beatles LP? The, the, Peter Blake. Peter Blake, and he was talking to um, um, oh, the guy with polio. Uh, anyway, the, the, the blockheads, uh, Ian Drury. Uh, 
That's right, he was talking to Andrew. <laughs> and he said, do you like Marilyn Munro? Do you like Buddy Holly? Do you like Elvis Presley? Do you like blah, 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 blah. Well, fucking paint what you like. <laughs> and I thought, that was, I heard that interview and I thought, and I was, combine that with Creed, and I thought, I came back and I thought, yes, I'll paint something I like rather than trying to say something. Just start painting something I like. And the last 20 years of work or more is, is, is built around that idea. You know, I like this, I like that. Put it together, try and say something. 3D, the 3D thing. And I, I quite like the juxtaposition of 3D and not 3D. Um, and I, I had had an awful time uh, loosening up let it let it be more free rather than being very careful you know what I mean yeah but that's that's my nature to be very very careful so I have started using these things okay and some of, the, and some of those earlier texture paintings this was the rule I can't use anything smaller than that for painting did you hear that yeah yeah did, did you hear that yeah, yeah. so I use I, I use that for the whole painting and nothing else so I, I gave myself silly little rules to free me up from doing little precious marks instead of doing like that but uh, and, and that has helped a lot and now I can sort of start putting paint on like this and you let that dry and, and then put another colour on top and it starts catching. And yes. It's all about mistakes. And then you cover up the, 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 the mistakes you don't like and you keep building it up. So I like that sort of freedom and lots of colours start coming through, which, which, which helps, you know. So do, do you paint primarily on canvas or wooden board? I mean, what's your favourite sort of medium to paint on? Uh, Canvas on board, but 90% uh, or more now is on paper. All right. All, 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 all what you can see is on paper. Um, there's my roll of paper, one of them. And uh, So that's on a board, and I've I, I put the um, I put the paper in the water outside and stretch it. I put it on here, and then put the brown tape right down there, and let it dry slowly. And that's can you hear? It's, it's a bit like yeah, a yeah. canvas. Okay. Um, what? what what, what 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 paper is that? I mean, what what thickness are we talking? It, well, that one I tapped was two hundred grams per square meter or something like that. Right. Um, but I've got even, um, when I do the big paintings, it's it's that it's that thick. I don't know if you could see the, it's quite, yep. quite it's quite almost card it's almost card but I stick that in the water but and then I could do painting um, oh. there can you see that one yep okay so it still has a you could get it really really tight on the brown paper and then I um, uh, sometimes I put TVA glue over it water, water, water it down do two or three coats or just household uh, household paint you know the one that sticks to your skin you could peel it got yep. TVA in a couple of coats of that sometimes I'm careful how I do the brush strokes on that depending on what I want to do because the beauty of that is you can actually put paint on then wipe it off and another color and then wipe it off but you get these lovely little blends and that contrast with the thickness the thick paint so you can get these contrasts going and because of that 
because of that, this, uh, I found out a way of doing the rocks and things in Crete to get this sort of. I mean, it, it's 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 almost 3D sometimes. Yeah. You know, to, where, where does where, where does painting stop and sculpture start? It's it, it, it's like that, you know. Uh, and what, what will you mugs. use? Will you use prim primarily oil oil or will you use acrylic? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never used acrylic. Um, I've just, I've just, I've sort of stuck to what I know, really. Uh, I, I, like you said earlier, I have no idea how to mix paints or, um, you know, in, in the, it's all experiment as I go along. And, because uh, I, I remember, you reminded me, I, I asked this tutor, Dave Willits, a painter in uh, Nottingham, I said, all these other students seem to know how to, all, they know all the names of the colors and all the rest of it. They said, I, I don't know any of this. How do I learn it? He says, don't bother. Just get on with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, I, felt, I felt, I mean, he couldn't have said a better thing. I'd never felt so happy. You say, oh, I'm free, you know, I'm free. You, you were, especially at that age, I was only 19, 20. You, you're worried about what you do, you know. So that freed me up. So yeah, and I use um, the normal Winton um, oils and things like that, but but I, I buy in the artist colours as well, you know, the very expensive ones, and um, th they range from about uh, the 200 mil tube, they're, they're from 26 quid to 56 or 80 pounds, whatever. So I have a few of those because the colours are so wow, well, you know, and they're they're so strong and um, and I, I suppose it's quite good to come back from Crete to here because it's darker. The colours become brighter here. Yeah. Uh, you, so you so I, I'm getting braver and um, I I, it, I, look, I and I, I look at other painters like Bacon or. Um, David uh, David Bumberg. Uh, I've been looking at um, John Craxton, and I, I get the books in and just read them or find find example of that. I mean, I can give you one example. I don't know if you notice in quite a few paintings that that, that orangey colour comes in all the time. Uh, the background or something is always orange or something like that. Well, I got. I got that from a Francis Bacon comment in, in, in the book up there. Um, and he said, oh, I, I often use that orange, but it's not dripped. He, uh, you know, it's, if it's blue, it's the sky. If it's green, it's the it's ground. People's minds, and I quite, I quite, I thought this was, I like that. <laughs> so I, I took that idea. And, and, and started using the orange a bit when I needed a background, you know. And it, sometimes I paint the whole painting, the whole, the whole, the whole painting with the orange, and then work on it, and then just leave some of it coming through where I want it to, you know. So there's a there's a whole library of little little things coming in like that, you know. Up here, up here I've got uh, about. Uh, 15 files. So I've got hills in this one and rocks in this one and uh, the sea or a wave. And the, you know, so it, it's like a, a dictionary of images. I could just refer to them every now and again. And uh, uh, you know, if I if I need that wave, I can use that wave. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the paintings have reference to Crete in terms of where they are, but I'm not making a copy of what I see. Mm. It's a copy of what I remember, although the basics might be there. It's a copy of what I remember or how I feel about, it, rather than, you know, the photographic memory thing. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Mm. So, was there, is there any particular? Um, I mean, it's, it's a very wide question because, as you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is is there any particular artist that you you kind of? Think, wow, that's a benchmark. I would love to get to that point. Um, I, 
I think all those sort of people I mentioned, I, yes. I, I, and I think it, the more I learn about other people, the, 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 the more it changes. So I can pick, it's, it's not that it's one. When I started, it was René Magritte. Because when, in college, I was doing things like René Magritte. And this guy came up to the tutor and said, have you, have you ever seen Magritte? And I said, who's that? And he took me into the library and showed me all these pictures. And I thought, Ted, this is, this is what I'm doing, you know. So, moons on top of someone's head and things. And I'd never, seen, I'd never heard of the guy. And so that, opened, that was a, a... I've always been like that gentle surrealism. I was lucky to be enough uh, to be taught for a little bit when I was at Culture Art School by John Nash, Paul Nash's brother. He was a lovely old man, and uh, he, he, he wrote my recommendation for Nottingham, which said, to whom it may concern. I like Michael's work very much, but I don't understand any of it. Yours sincerely, John Nash. That's the best compliment any artist can have, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, I was in, yeah. But again, um, I mentioned that because just recently I got the, the, um, a Paul Nash book. And, that, and it's like David Bomberg as well. There's, there's this English thing that's gone on for a long time and they're sort of being revived again. They're being realised how important they are. Revilius was another one. And there's this English thing going on. Well, it didn't exist when I went to college. Everything was American. Sculpture was English. Philip King and the New Generation and all that sort of thing. Uh, all the paintings were American. Wesselman, uh, Jasper Johns, blah, 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 blah. All, all that lot, you know. And um, and then then this sort of um, abstract poppy art came in. And when we did our sort of final, the final show, everybody got a good grade except me. Got, got a pass. And they they were all doing blue blue circle on red background, red circle on blue background. You know all this Valsarelli sort of stuff. They all got high grades because that was the fashion of the time. And I met the tutors many years later. I said, "You bastards! Why didn't you give me a proper grade? Because I'd have got a higher grade when I was teaching." And they said, "Well, we couldn't think of a name for it in those days." <laughs> now it's now it's called conceptual art, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, uh, some of the things I did was um, in in ceramics in in clay. I made a bag of chips, but they were white and cold and horrible. I made a steak and kidney pie and, uh, and a hamburger in, in things, and then painted them and to look like the real thing. I was doing all these objects as well as the painting. I did a model of my hat, so, and so you had a painting with a box behind it, and the hat was hanging on a hook. It was, it was so Magritte, and, and uh, you know this lovely blue sky, and a workman's hat hanging up in the sky. All this stuff, and um, they were just stepping stones. Mm -hmm. they, they, you can't. I mean, I was, I was mentally sixteen. And, and, and there I was, 20, 21, 20, 23, before I left uh, Nottingham, 23, 24. Um, and I was still very, very young, naive, you know, because when you're locked away in those schools, um, uh, I look back at it, it, it was just the wonderment of being in, in, in that situation, where um, I'd never seen anything like it. And you, you can imagine it was uh, jump, jumping in the swimming pool at the deep end. Yeah. It really was, you know. And, and uh, I was always worried about what they thought. Because the tutors would look round the door and say, oh, what the hell is he doing today? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I didn't take it as a compliment, but they, I think they meant well. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, it's fascinating because one of my earliest kind of uh, inspirations was uh, Jura and I was I remember being a child and just being blown away by just its engravings and then I saw his paintings and to this day I still think 
as much as I, you know, strive and I strive and I strive to always be the best yeah, yeah. I can, I think some of these, some of the old masters, they really could, they are old masters because what they were doing and with the, you know, with the materials they had and the time they were in, it's, it's, it blows my mind to this day. You know, they were so, so yeah. technical that, like I say, it goes back to what I was trying to say. We're not, people aren't taught the techniques anymore. They're just told, go ahead. And there's a, there's a, like you said earlier on, there's a, there's a lot of hard work and practice to get to this point. I think people assume, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people assume when, when you're an artist, it's, it's just this, and you probably had it since you was like, oh, you're just naturally gifted. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe, but it's still a lot of work. I go back to my gardener thing, the old gardener down the road. It's a good one to tell them, you know, it's like gardening, you know, plug, 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 you know. But I, I, uh, you, you hit a, a, a bell there. Um, yeah, I look at, I've been, I, uh, I, I've been looking at old masters. I, in fact, I was looking at um, El Greco this week and um, before that, um, who does this car screw? Um, Caravaggio. And I, and I find him very useful to have a look at and all the rest of it. But the, the first one, I, I would say, would help me a lot. Um, I'd forgotten this, I haven't used him for years. Fra Angelico. Mm. And a, a lot of his saints and things are in frames or, or different shapes of where they fitted in the church. And I, I've always had the frame in my mind ever since art school, everything has a frame round it. So the frame came in the frame, the frame within a frame. A lot of the work has this juxtaposition between what's the frame, what's the outside. So then I got a lot of that from Fra Angelico. Mm. But, you know, have a look at him. He's, he's quite, it's, it's quite interesting stuff. But the nice thing I've got, you remember there's old books in, 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 uh, in, in the libraries and they have almost a cloth like cover. I think they're pre-war books and, 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 and got a textured cover and the, the illustrations are not particularly good inside. They're a bit old because the printing was not very good. But I love them because they give them a sort of another quality which I take and use as well. Yeah, I mean, it, I've, I've often, I don't know if you're the same, but I've often thought there's a, there's a large part of me that would have loved to have lived in those times because I think in some ways, Art was a lot kind of, um, as I said, it was, it was a, you, you built up to it, but you were kind of back, if you've gone back maybe 500 years ago, at least if you were an artist and you were proficient in what you do, you, you had patrons, you had either the church or you had some sort of, you know, well off family looking after you. Whereas now, it's, I don't know, but it's, but it's like, it, 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 it's kind of almost taken for granted these days. And I, I'd love to have gone back and been like, okay, great, there, there's a church. Hey, Ain't the whole thing. I mean, that, that would be me in heaven. You know what I mean? I, 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 um, I, I, I know what you're saying. I find, I find some of the stuff I see, a lot of it to me becomes a bit flippant. Hmm. You know, uh, and, and sometimes, uh, again, I, I find it. I mean, the one that always disappoints me is when they do these these little films. In, in, they make a film, in, 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 in the, and I'm going, well, for God's sake, do a proper film or, or find another media or something, you know. I, and uh, I, I mean, sometimes I could see the point they're trying to make, but to me, it's just a lot of it. And I, I haven't seen a lot recently, but um, uh, I went to the um, the Turner thing, you know, a few years ago. And there, there was no paintings, it was just the films. It turned out you needed four and a half hours to see all, the, all, all these little films. And I'm going, hang on, um, I, I'm not sure about this. And, and, and to me, they were not well done at all. This is what, um, unless I'm missing the point completely, um, I, I just uh, I've got. My friend down the road, a painter, he, he finds it the same. We just, we just can't find a way of how do you get into this? We're, we're not, we feel like country bumpkins, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, 
No, I think you're right. And I, 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 this is my personal thought on it. I think it's been a, this is a, um, an end result or what we're going through is, is postmodernism. You know, the, the idea, I mean, you will literally, I mean, the amount of times I've been into galleries and thought, wow, my, if I had a five year old son, if he painted that, you know, you, yeah. and you'll say, my five year old son can paint that. But the, the, the pretension around it is like, oh, well, you just don't understand what the artist is. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, to me, that's, that's this, this is postmodern thing that we're in. And I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I sometimes go to galleries and think, really? Is this really what people are, are into? Because. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't knock it all because I mean, you have to treat it a bit like languages. You yes. know, just because you, uh, you just because you don't understand a word of the language doesn't mean it's nonsense. You, you you've got to be a bit careful on this one, you know. But I I just saying that I can't. Some of it, I mean, like the the, the Chinese guy who does lots of things. Um, I can't remember his name. He he's been at the Tate Tate Modern, um, the one that got expelled from China, and his some of his stuff I, I found really interesting, you know. Um, uh, not that I knew what it was, but it did. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you don't you don't know. Um, I've just got this thing about the film thing, particularly. I find um, I just I just find it bad film. Mm. You know, if I want to see a film, I'll see a good film. You know, I don't want to see um, badly focused, badly put together. You know, um, and I'm, I'm sometimes. I, I sometimes wonder whether I'm just an old craftsman, you know what I mean? I prefer the, the craftsman side of things. And I think, from what I can gather, I think that's beginning to creep back in again. Yes. I, it, I think it's just, I think that it's turning back again. Yeah. The, the, the craftsman. And, I, and I, I, I'd like to see that. And, uh, you know, some... The, this flood, 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 where some of the work um, I can get. Tom got me a book on the colony rooms in uh, Soho, and uh, I, I, I went there a few times, and uh, uh, the few times I went there, was, there was no one there, just one or two people, and all the rest of it. But reading the book, and oh, and, and I know that name, blah blah blah, 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 blah Francis Bacon, blah blah blah, blah. It goes on and on and on, and it gets to a stage in the book where that, what they call them, the new British artists creep in. Mm. Um, Trace Damon and uh, not her, but the, the the guy who does the thing, and the whole you could tell in the book, the uh, the person who wrote it, the whole atmosphere just changes. Yeah. It, 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 it lost, it just loses that, uh, what it was, and this lot, this lot move in, and I, uh, I, I, I mean, Damien Hurst, for example, I, I'm not, I just can't, I'm not sure what, what is the guy about, he, to me, he's a bit of a Boris, jo Boris Johnson of art, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> no, you know, you, you're correct. How do you get a day? How do you get a Damien Hurst? You send him, to, send him to Eton. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I, 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 it's become like I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I concur with you. I think we're we're at the beginning of something. You know, a, it's, it's all it's all everything in life is, is circular anyway. We're all yeah, going. Exactly. But I I think what what we're going through now is like you said. I think people are appreciating what the what you know the craft of it. And I think also there's been. Yeah. And it got accelerated, particularly in the 80s and the 90s. It's never really stopped. But a lot of our over the last sort of 20, 30 years, it's been about the brand. It's all about, you know, like I say, Damien Hurst is all about the brand of Damien Hurst. Banks is all about the brand yeah. of Banksy. It's, you know, what I mean, yeah, I, yeah. it becomes, it almost becomes like an inner joke of, of, of the pretensions of these artists or, or that the establishment laughing at everyone else saying, well, if you, if you don't get it, then you're some sort of player. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. And art oh, yeah, I just, well, yeah. I, 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 to me, it's all about, 
th those sort of people to me is about taking, not giving. Yes. And I, I, I think this, you know, I, I, I think history will prove prove right in a few years. That he'll be just, there'll just be this little blimp in the book about those, those that, that stage in British art. I don't think it'll last very long. You know, that's that's why I got more interested in the the, the pre-war ones. Uh, yeah. Becomes quite interesting. They they've suddenly woken up, and in fact, um, John Nash, who just lived down the road from me, about five miles from here, um, he uh, they put an exhibition of his stuff down in um, Bournemouth or some somewhere like that on the south coast. The first his first sort of retrospective, a proper one, you know. And the, the guy's been dead since '77. Amazing, isn't it? You know, and he was—he was responsible for bit, uh, more or less on his own bringing woodcuts back into fashion. Mm. You know, these, these flowers and things he did. Lovely old man, you know. I tell you where who lives in his house now. Have you heard of Ronald Blythe, the, no. the writer? No, tell me more. They—they—they they, they made they made a film called Aikenfield about Suffolk people. Um, if, if you remember that name, Aikenfield, A A K, then Field. Um, he's written about twenty, thirty books, um, and he, he's written about John Clare. He, he must be ninety-five, ninety-six now. And uh, I can tell you, he's such a lovely man. He he looked after John Nash and his wife till they died, and they, they left in this, this little cottage down in this valley near here. And um, we were at a, at a do, a sort of little fate type thing to raise money for Gainsborough House again 30, 40 years ago. And uh, I, I met Ronnie for the first time. He said, oh, because he knew my parents very well because my father was the vicar of the local church and all the rest of it. And, uh, we were talking and he said, oh, how's, how's your father and all this? And these women, these, these ladies keep coming past. And, oh, Ronnie, have one of my cakes and put a cake on there. And then another one would come and put another cake on there. And it went on like this. And poor Ronnie's dish was getting more and more like this. And it, I shall already remember saying, oh, Michael, he says, take me away from these women. <laughs> <laughs> He, he came out with he came out with a lovely some he just I went to see him to get a book signed for my mother and uh, I don't know him well I just an acquaintance and he, he we're talking about the art things and um, he said he said it's all right for these others he said that for you and me Mike he says it never ends that's the problem it never ends. And there he is, still right. He's 90, I think he's 99 this year, or some, something like that. Yeah. He's still very. Un if you, if, um, Ronnie Blythe, B L Y T H E. If you clock him in on your machine, there, um, there's lots of little interviews with him. You know, the a 20 minute interview or a two minute one. There's lots. You'll get the idea, and uh, it might be worth you having a look. He's, he's an interesting guy. Now, now, speaking from 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 past experiences, I, I'm fascinated to know if you've been in the same position. Have you ever had? Um, I'll give you a quick little anecdote. I, I, people often ask me, "What's the favourite painting you know I've ever I've ever created?" And I said, well, the, "The best painting I've ever created." Um, I, I painted it, and then I, I it was a, it was a great lesson I learned from doing it. I kept painting, and I kept painting, and I painting, and painting. And I, let, I didn't stop. And then the, the original beautiful painting I had just ended up just being lost because I just never stopped. I just kept going on and on and on and it got lost under layers of paint, which is a great lesson I learned for myself. Like one of the secrets of being an artist is learning when to, to stop and walk away. So is there any is there any particular painting? Where you, is that an experience you've had before? Lots and lots of times. And I think... <laughs> And, and it, it, my, my wife, it, 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 
I mean, she's an artist when she's cooking, but, but when it comes to what I do, it's, 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 there's a big gap. And, and even she can see, so for, stop fiddling. She says, stop fiddling. And, and I have to say to myself, no one else will bloody notice this anyway, so just leave it, you know. But that, I think that's quite, I, I, I think that's something I've learned by work, working in series. You know, um, <coughs> um, often there's 60 or 70 or 70 paintings in the same little series, you know. Um, the, the, the bird ones I did recently, they, they, there's, there's at least 50. There's 50 of them. Um, and therefore, the fiddling, st the fiddling stage gets less and less. Because you're spreading it out a little bit, and I think that that that's helped a lot. But uh, I know what you mean. I, I go like, oh, let's get that little dot right. You know, I don't like that. And uh, then I, of course, I mess the whole bloody thing up. And then you have to paint over it again and start again, and it's never the same. No, it's yeah. never the same. And you think, shit, why did I do that? Why did I just leave it? You know. So I'm getting up. I'm I'm seventy-seven next, so I'm beginning to. to Think like that, but it's taken me how many years to get far. Did you hear me then? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 fine. Go on. That's all right. It's cutting out. So, uh, I, as I said, like you're saying, I, I think I've lost so many good paintings, I think, uh, which would have been better left alone than trying to correct things or think I'm correcting things. Um, it's a very difficult one, that is. Very difficult. It is. I mean, I gotta say, I mean, I'm, I'm, again, you, you touched upon it with your bird. You know, I, if you go to your Instagram site, for, for example, you see, like you said, recent series on birds. Yes. I, I love painting birds. It's one of my one of my passions. I mean, what, what do you what have you discovered about the nature of birds from painting them? What happened was, and this is how the tangent worked, I did a, some little orangey landscape that looked like snowy landscape, and they're, they're, they're like a, an X. So I had this, I did a series of those, and out of those, the, the landscape became the wings of the bird, and it grew, the landscape grew out of it. <coughs> so they also became a little bit political. Because birds can be very nasty, and, uh, I quite enjoyed. I could, I quite enjoyed painting that and thinking, you know, Boris's guts being plucked out from a, a dead bird. You know, which uh, I had a, I had a, I had a there, there was a sort of. This is one of my little tangents, and I just thought. Um, I always remember a, a Jewish guy I met in Sweden. He'd come out of a concentration camp, and. He, as soon as I mentioned politics, he'd say, politics is for the birds. And mm -hmm. I quite like that. I'm doing the birds and the politics creep in, you know, um, very subtly. I just, I, but that was in my mind a little bit. So that introduced, and the politics, I was, that was almost a reintroduction. So I, I more or less stopped it after a while because I didn't want to go on that direction. But uh, some, of the, uh, some of the work from the 1970s, is in the ages was very political about any skilling and the bombings in in in, in Ireland and uh, there's a lot with that face on and the reason I uh, you know the ones I'm talking about this yeah. with, with the mark with the plaster across the nose well when I play the harmonica I wear a wire thing round here to hold the harmonica you know and uh, they built this guy's face up with the uh, wires and things which look like a harmonica holder. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so and that, that was the starting point on that. Um, so, again, it, it's interesting. You're getting two thoughts going on. So I, I recognize the harmonica holder and there were these surgeons building a face up with almost harmonica holders together. And that's how those two came together. So I, I quite like that juxtaposition of two things happening. Um, 
at the moment I'm I've gone back a step and I'm going to look at the gorges. Uh, I've done some gorges in Crete, so I'm doing the basis of the gorges and then see what happens now. Uh, and of how another way or find a way of how I'm going to express those gorges. Um, I'm not sure because I. I've just looked at John Craxton's gorges and they're quite different. So I may get something from him that I put in. And it's never copying. It's, it, 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 you can't copy. It just, it, it just helps you over the next step and you, it, it, it turns into another idea. And I think I, um, a bit like the snowball a little bit. You know, rolling a snowball. And it gets too big and then a great lump falls off and you have to roll it again. And then another big lump falls off. And that's, at the moment, the lump has just fallen off. I'm having a bad patch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so would you, if you're, I'll give you an example, or a, a scenario. If, if you were to, your house is on fire, is, is, do you have one painting that you would run in and save that you've created? I can say I've got a few actually. Okay. I've got the few now. Um, I never um, thought of it like that. Um, boom. The painting or the wife? Ah, that would be an interesting question. <laughs> um, uh, yes. <laughs> I just, I've got to be careful. She's got ears like an elephant. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, No, I think I think in the last twenty years, I I think I've got a few that I would keep. But then I, I I've looked back at some early ones I've got. There's there's one or two. There's one or two. I'd I'd, I'd love to have a, a retrospective before before I pop the clogs, um, because then it'd be not, it'd be quite interesting to pull out uh, the best one of that era or the best one of that era. I think I've had about six or, six or seven stages in my life, so. Each each ten years has has a good one, I think, or a better one. It'd be just nice to put the have the space to put them up together to see what you know that change that you, you go through. You know, uh, um, but I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't pick out particularly one. I could pick out a group. I could pick out a group. I would be pleased with. Okay, okay, yeah, but yeah, I mean. I think it goes, it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning. It's uh, you have a desire. You, you're almost told when you're an artist, you, you should strive towards a gallery. But I think the ideal, from my perspective, I'm sure you feel the same. Is you just want people to see what you've created. Because I think one of the things about being an artist, you're doing it all. And it's all kind of you're very isolated. And you're very like you were saying before we went live. It's a very solitary profession, and you just want and people. The, the other, yeah. Go on. The other. Gr are you there? Yeah, 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 go on. It's cutting, it's cutting out a bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 I think the good thing is, is, is yeah, I think that they should be seen because, and you should be seen by yourself because they're one thing in this room, put them out there on another wall, you think, oh my God, did I do that? It becomes quite interesting how you see yourself elsewhere and um, this happened to me um, about three or four years ago I had my first little exhibition in Crete can you hear me Jim? yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, sorry just you're cutting and um, it was in a, a, a disused olive olive press um, factory so this lovely big room and I sent the paintings out there and so I, their paintings about Crete, and I then sent them back again and had this exhibition. And it was fascinating to see, from my point of view, it was fascinating to see them somewhere else. And this is the first time for a long time I'd seen, I could walk in a room with nobody there just to see your own work, but in a different place. And I, w I wish I'd done that a bit more often because uh, it, 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 it does open your eyes to your own, your own work a little bit yeah 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, like you say, when you take art out of a, when you're painting into another, another scenario, another room or another space, it's amazing, like you said, it's amazing yeah. how much you, it changes the whole perspective of what you create. Yeah. Now, one of the things you, you, you mentioned earlier on, you paint first thing in the morning, which is almost completely opposite to me because I'm, I'm a night painter. I, 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 I don't start getting creative until maybe one in the morning. I'm, I'm that kind of thing. So, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the question I wanted to ask is, do you have, do you keep a, um, a sketchbook or a, a pad by your bed so, and so you can recall dreams and, or is that something just I do? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't do, do that, but, um, I do note, I do note things down. Uh, you know, if I suddenly think about it, in fact, In case I was picking something up today, that's, that's there ready. I put it there ready before we started to make sure if something reminds me, I'll, I'll write it down. Um, if I see something in a magazine or a newspaper, I, I take it out and put it in a pile, and then I, I start piling these things. And um, sometimes, um, just by collecting images and all the rest of it, uh, it, it sort of tells you something. But it's only by putting things together, um, like in my, in the, my filing system, do I, does the idea evolve? Because sometimes here it's it's not working. Um, I've got um, I've got a file up there with things to do, and I look at that one. What, I can't remember what I was going to do, but another image will come along, and the two will go together, and it'll start working, and it starts building up. Um, and uh, I mean, the, the only regret, regret I have with my work is that um, all the drawing has gone onto the, a lot of the drawing has gone onto the, uh, on the paper, on the canvas before it starts. So it gets covered up. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I never have images of drawing. I got lots, I've got hundreds of little drawings. I sometimes do 20 or 30 in a row. Very small ones. That's a quick idea. Another quick idea. Another quick idea. And um, it's funny they they develop. It's something I learned to do when I was teaching, and I was so bored with all the children. I'd set them their work, make them get on with it, and then I do all my drawings. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, "What are you doing, sir?" And I said. I'm writing to my auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you mentioned that obviously you're doing series. I mean, you're, what's your, what, what series are you particularly working on right now? Tim, I didn't hear that. It, it no, cut we're, out. We're having quite bad connections here. I'm saying. What what particular series? I mean, you mentioned earlier on. What what series are you particularly working on right now? Uh, I've, I've I've gone back a bit, and I'm, I'm looking at the gorges again now. Right. I've done several of gorges, so I've I've gone back a bit. Um, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm just looking at those gorges again. Um, I'm not. Sure sure how they're going to work out i'm uh, uh I've, I've draw I've, I've done the drawings from from uh, the photos or or notes and i'm just the, the first thing i do is put in markers so i keep some sort of structure that there though i i might not stick to it but i like working to a structure and then building up from there you know um I, 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 I've got this thing about the gorges, um, how the hell you, how you hell the, the, you do them, because um, it's very hard to explain in paint, because a bit like for photography, photography changes what the landscape looks like. Um, these gorges, when you, in Crete, when you stand there like this and look up, uh, it's very hard, how the hell do you, get this 
idea of, of, of the space. In other words, I, I'll give you a good example. Uh, my Dutch friends were taking me down a gorge on the south coast, and I said, "Oh, look at those! Look at those crows up there!" And then I realised they were not crows; they were vultures. Mm. So the whole scale, the whole scale of everything, completely changed. And once you knew that, you sort of, sort of relook and think, "Christ, I've got everything." You know, your brain was doing one thing, but your eyes have suddenly realised you're totally out of proportion. And that, I'm interested in that side, how you bring that in sometimes. Um, and sometimes I think it's about not what you put in to the paintings, but what you leave out yes. to emphasise what you're trying to say. It, it, it's, it, it's a bit like, you know, when, we, when we're doing... A, a, um, the music, um, you know, the, the, the discussion. What's the per what's the perfect uh, the perfect pop song? And we, most of us, agree that it was um, the Beach Boys' "God Only Knows." And it's so it's so simple. God <coughs> only knows, da, 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 da. And it's so simple, so beautiful at everything. And it's the most simple little line you could ever have. Um, and I think sometimes. It, 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 we're going back to this fiddle stage in painting. Such mm. a bloody use. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. Go away. Chop me hand off. Uh, you know, uh, it's, I think um, trying to be trying to be brave and, but know what you're doing. It, 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 again, two things put together again. Um, I think that's right. Trying to be brave and putting and, and, and making the marks with that confidence. Um, I'm still looking for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, like you said, I mean, I think it's been a bit of a theme of this conversation. It's, it's a, it's an ongoing process, and I, you know, I think you're probably probably it's something we both have in common. It, I, I often think that I will never ever get to the point where I'll, I'll, I'll sit and look at something and think, oh, that, that's the ultimate. Because it's always a, a learning process. It's always it a. It, it, it never ends. It never ends. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, you, before we sort of wrap this up, you, you, you sort of, you yeah. kind of t you've touched on this a couple of times in this conversation that you, your, your love of music. Is that, to, to, to come on, so tell me more. Where, is that something you, do you play? I mean, what, you mentioned the harmonica. Is that. That's something you, you yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, the music started at school, and um, we had a school band. We went toward Germany in 1964. In the in the band was Brinsley Swartz and Nick Lowe. You've probably heard of Nick Lowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was our bass guitarist. Brinsley Swartz played with Graham Parker and the Rumour, Barry Landerman had a hit with the Hitching a Ride, I think, with the pop hit. Um, but they, they, I was a little bit older than them, so I moved on. And from then on, I, I played um, in local pubs and things like that. But uh, I wasn't so much about a band. I did my own thing. Because I'm a bad musician, I had to make songs fit me, not me fit the songs. So, um, uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, I had a very good guitarist who plays with uh, um, Cockney Rebel now, uh, Steve Harley. Right. Uh, and he, he, we split up because he had to move. And uh, so I, I said, Christ, I've got, I've got these songs that I'd get the last 30 seconds. So I thought I'll, I learned the harmonica when I was about 35. And uh, so I could make the songs a bit longer. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it it worked very well, and that in Crete, I've got a guitarist out there who's, who is from Scotland, from Glasgow. He lives out there. Very, very good guitarist. And he, when I go out there, he plays with me, and we we get a nice crowd—100 people, 150 people—in the taverna and outside. And when you're bored, I can just sing to the stars. You know, it's wonderful. And I, I, I do a lot of it. We do it. We're um, across the board. What we do, like. Um, I do. We do one or two of our own numbers, but um, I do a lot of Dylan, a lot of um, Cohen, and 
Oh, it, 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 you, you name it, any direction. It, it, it's about the song. And then I learned to develop it, make the song mine. You see what I mean? We're not trying to copy. We make the song, make the song our own, you know. Because people come up to us and say, Who, what was that song you did? You know, and then, then they realize what it is. We have, some of them we don't change very much. Some we change an awful lot to make them how we want them to be, you know. Um, so, uh, and again, like the painting, um, every, every time we play is like having a practice. So we sang that song 60, 600 times. Somehow, every now and again, it changes a little bit. And something develops in it, and it becomes what we do with it. So that, again, so the same, there's almost the same process going on, you, using other material, but letting it develop. Yeah. And I quite like that. And, it, and it, I find it works with people, you know, with all the, um, we get, the, we get the very good, good response, you know, so something's working. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, I think it's before we went, before we went, you know, recording on this, I, I was saying to you that one of my, I don't know, my, for want of a better word, missions in life is to reconnect the musicians and the artists. Because when I, when I was a child, you know, album yeah. covers were, were literally drawn by the artist, by the, you know, the band would literally say, right, you know, they, they would specifically have an artist for, and they would design the album covers and they were pieces of artwork. And then, like I said, it's been yeah. uh, in the twenty in in the eighties in the last top twenty years. It's all become digital, and I I think hopefully, exactly. God. Yeah, no, 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 just agreeing with you. It, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it's almost like the like the T-shirt. Everything has to be a four size now. Mm. So it just limits what it limits what they do. And it's going to get a, a wet. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the, the mu again, I, I've got a, from the, from the music, I've got a lot, a, 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 a lot to do with the painting. Um, I mean, I, I, I do Dylan's Mr. Tambourine Man, but the, the, the full version of it, you know, and um, there's lovely images in there, <laughs> things like to stand beneath the diamond sky with one hand waving free. And, uh, and the only, uh, I've got an image near to it, Gustav Carb, there's a painted by Gustav Corbe, and he's standing saluting the sea. In fact, he's saluting himself, because he's a very conceited man. But <laughs> you get those sort of images together. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, uh, another song, it'll be just, oh yes, um, I've only done it in public in the last five years, but, it, but I've been working on it for 40 years with Leonard Cohen's called The Stranger, The Stranger's Song. And uh, what was the line? Yeah, that's right. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, and he takes from his wallet an old scheduled train. And I just got this image from it. It sounds nonsense on its own. A schedule, I like the word schedule rather than schedule schedule of train and I just got this image in the brain which festered um, and it, I said it it's taken 40 years or more to, to, to get this song off the ground I, I, I've got there now and it's just one of these songs that every time you do it it'll be different so I just have to accept that, that depends on your mood and how you're going to do it you just start and then the intonation of how you say something. Again, almost the same process again. Yeah, perfect. Well, we are, you know, it's just because of the, the, the time and stuff, our, our, our hours coming up. So it, it's been, thank you very much, Mick, for giving me your time. And I know, you know what I mean? I know, I, I, although I say that, but we, we artists, I mean, any excuse to stop work and we do. <laughs> Let's be sure about it. <laughs> We're very, we, we, yeah. Well, if you, if, if, if you 
if, 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 if you want to do more another time or later, uh, 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 more now you know me a little bit better, if you want to be a bit more specific, um, that, that would be fine by me, okay? Perfect. Well, look, before we do wrap this up, I'm going to... Um... I'm going to leave you with the final word, so have the final word, my friend. You want me to have the final word? Yeah, go on. Enlighten us all. Yeah. Well, yeah, just say thanks. Well, thanks, A, thanks for getting in touch. I've enjoyed it. I've had a chat like this with anyone for a very long time. All my mates are dead. <laughs> so, so, I hope I haven't put a curse on you. <laughs> but the thing is, you see, when, 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 um, I, I give you an example. When John Adiman was alive here, the painter, and uh, we'd have the have a, have a black day or a black week, and nothing's going right, and I'd ring him up. I said, "Hello, John. How are you? Uh, I think we better go down to the doctor." And we go down do a pub crawl of, of Sunbury. <laughs> And end up in the most paralytic situation. But next day, back in the studio, you felt marvellous because with a long conversation, you just got one phrase or one little something out of the whole day. And, I, and I'll leave you, I'll leave you with John's favourite phrase. My dear friend, everything is so difficult. Perfect. Well, with that, I was going to say, life is people, people. <laughs> well, they say that life is people, and that people are angels, and that angels are devils, and the devils are me and you.